Hey guys, this is Salem out here in the wild. And at the end of this video, you're gonna understand very important concepts that are gonna allow you to understand and appreciate all the patterns that are happening here in the world. From clouds to weather to people and so on. And the concepts that I want to talk about are space, time, and mass. So when you look out uh, into the world, you basically see a bunch of objects, like a tree, like I see a fly flying around, it's moving from one point to another, there are birds flying, there are houses over there, the houses are standing still, they're not breaking apart, why are they standing still? Even though there's a lot of weight on them, the houses are still supporting themselves. How does that happen? How do birds fly? How do they stay up in the sky? how do clouds stay up high, and so on. So when you try to describe these objects, you, for, for example, a bird, you can say, oh, the bird uh, has a color, has a shape, maybe it thinks, maybe it sees, and all that. But from our point of view, one very important key information about the bird is where it is and the way it moves. And so motion is very fundamental to understanding the world. And if you really get deep into it, you discover that even the bird's colors are because of the specific way its atoms move and because of the specific way light moves from the bird to you. So you start to discover that in order to understand almost anything, you need to understand about motion. Even your brain and your psychological state is not unrelated to motion because in your brain, there are a lot of uh, electrons and mole molecules and different chemicals that are moving around and that specific pattern of motion somehow results in the way you think. We of course don't completely understand how these thought processes arise in detail. There's a lot of work to be done to understand how that happens or how a bird is able to be alive and fly. But it is ultimately motion. So this is, so starting from this observation, we start, we want to understand what space is. So I look out here and I want to say, well, there's the top of that tree and I want to get there. Or I want to describe to a computer or a robot how to get there. And I'm using the example of a robot because a robot is not going to do anything unless you tell it to. And you need to tell it the precise amount of information it needs to get there. So what I need to tell a robot is, three numbers. You need to go there and I'll give it a stick, maybe the arm of a robot, it's one meter. And I give it a stick and say, take your arm and go 10 times the distance of your arm that way to the north. And then go east two times the distance of your arm. And then go up six times the distance of your arm. So to get anywhere in the universe, basically, you need to give three numbers, which is basically north, south, east, west, and up and down. And that's why we say that our world is three-dimensional, because there are three numbers that you need to give. The other concept that is very important for you to understand is time. And time is basically change. If you look at the example of the bird, the bird is flying, but what does it mean to say that, sorry, there's a mail truck over there, what does it mean to say that the bus, or example of a bus, so the bus is moving and uh, I see it over there and then at some other time it's over there. But what does that time mean? What, what did I mean by saying other time? Like, is what is time? Because time is basically nothing without change. Or we can't really say, if, if I give you a picture of something that's just standing still, or a movie of something just standing still, you can't really tell, is it, is the, you can't really differentiate between the picture and the movie because nothing is changing. And so even though in the movie time is kind of moving, but you don't, you can't really tell. So the same thing, if in our world nothing was really changing, then you can't really say that there is time. So time is very, very related to change. And when people invented time, Basically, Newton was saying that there is something called absolute time that doesn't depend on where, uh, that doesn't really depend on how things are moving. Basically, he said that you can have something that's standing still, but time is still moving. But that doesn't really make sense. And what he really meant, if you look at what he said, is the absolute time is the time of the stars. 
So the stars had a regular motion, and that's where you start to get uh, the concept of time, when you start saying, oh, there's a regular motion. Every time the day comes again, so every time the, the sun rises again, that's one day. And so this cycle, you, you can start by using the cycle to define what time is. But there is an even more accurate way to define time, which is not by the rise of the sun, but the rise of the stars. Because the Earth is going around the sun, that motion adds to the rotation of the Earth. So it kind of changes the amount of the day by a little bit. Because the Earth is rotating and at the same time it's going around the sun, that changes how much a day is every time it goes around. But if you compare the rotation of the Earth to the stars, the, when you take the time that a star rises, that is a more accurate way to tell time. And so what I'm trying to get at here is that time doesn't make sense without change. And in order to start describing clocks, you need to look at nature and say, look at the regular cycles that are happening in nature and then use those to tell time. Nowadays, what we do, there is a cycle of rotation, but it's actually not the rotation of Earth. It's something much, much smaller. Now we use atomic clocks. So we can place these atoms everywhere in the world and then they're going around. And each person just has to look at how many times this uh, atom has uh, cycled and use that to tell time. But without that kind of change, time doesn't mean anything. Okay, so the third concept is mass. Mass is how do you start to change the state of motion of things. So if I have a very, very large object and I try to push it, I can't really push it. And I want to be able to describe why, is, why can't I push that object, but I can't push this other thing. So this thing, which I can push easily, is different than this other thing, which I can't push. And if those two things hit each other, the big one, let's say a truck, and the small one might be you, you hit a truck, you fly somewhere else, but the truck just keeps moving. And the way that we describe the difference between these two things is through the concept of a mass. You have things that are easy to change the way they're moving, Maybe they're standing still and you're trying to move them, or they're already moving and you're st trying to stop them. Things that are very hard to ch change the state of motion for, these things are called very heavy. And the other things for which it's easy to change the state of motion, these things are called light. They have a small mass. And the way you put a number on that, you take two things. One is uh, massive, one is not. You let them hit each other and you see how much, maybe this one was moving 20 meters per second and it changed by 20 meters. This one only changed by one meter. If you take the ratio of that, you get a measure of the mass. Okay, so this concludes the introduction. Uh, once you understand really these three concepts and start to get into Newton's laws, you can really understand uh, a lot about the way the world works. You can, uh, people who understand these laws can make rockets go out into space. They can understand how planets move and how the weather patterns uh, emerge. If you are riding a, a weather simulator that's gonna predict if it's gonna rain tomorrow or not, you need to understand how to put these laws on a computer and let them evolve. And uh, it will, the computer will then tell you if it will rain or not tomorrow with some probability. Okay, so thank you for watching to the end and I will see you next time.